What's going on, everybody? This is Maximilian. Today is an interesting day because today was SOPA Blackout Day. And if you don't know what that was, you probably didn't get online at all today, which I would assume for most of you is impossible. You had to at least notice something or whatever, but let's not dwell on evil government censorship policies that are potentially going to be passed in the Senate, because that's depressing. Let's have something fun going on. Let's, let's play some magic. I'm feeling some duels of the planeswalkers. Wait, what's that? You're feeling it too? Well, then let's get started. What the heck are we waiting for? I'm like, you guys haven't seen this in forever. Surely you are just aching in the loins to play some magic. Am I right? Okay, okay, maybe not that much, but still. We've been missing out on some duels of the planeswalkers, and we need to catch up. We're playing against Soren Markov today. Who is ironically getting a reprint, or blah, reprint in the new Dark Ascension set? And if you haven't seen him yet, and if, at least if you keep up with the game, understand how the rules work and everything, holy crap, he's amazing! Now I know there are probably going to be some naysayers in here, but man, Sword Markov got an upgrade compared to his old version. So, anywho, we have five lands in our hand, and that is not good. Uh, core Duelist, Core Outfitter is not getting us anywhere. At least we get a free mulligan. That's better. Ooh, that's way better. Much better. Alright, we're keeping this hand. No way am I mulliganing that hand. It appears we get to go first. For a change. Yay! So, let's see how explosive Soren comes out, because he can have some absolutely ridiculous ridiculous draws, even against this deck. He's gonna be a vampire-centric deck, so it's tribal, but it has a ton of removal in it, so we're gonna have to try and stick some threats and hope that he doesn't draw stuff. Which is asking for a lot, I will admit it. But, I mean, you gotta try something. So, let's see if we can stick an elite vanguard on there and keep him there. Gonna have to watch out for his little combat tricks that I've been blown out by in previous instances. Always forget what that one card is. I can't ever think of the name of it, but when I see it and get blown out by it, oh man. It sticks in the memory, just etches it in there. Child of Night is unfortunate. Although I wouldn't mind trading with that if in the event he attacks. Let's see. Kite Sail Apprentice. I mean, the question is do I play that? No, no way. Definitely run out the Sword of War and Peace. Because that card is going to help us out in this match. The life swing, any kind of life gain for that matter, is going to be quite helpful. Now I have a core outfitter in hand. Okay, so I can target itself with its ability. Uh, let's see if he blocks with the Child of Night. Because if he blocks with the Child of Night and we trade, I don't really care. He's definitely losing a way better creature than I am. So let's see what he does. Mmm, he just elects to take it. Fine by me. What are you going to play this turn, Mr. Markov? Eh, don't worry, I got nothing for you. Ooh, one of those bloodthirst things. Bloodthirst is a... Well, it's not really a new mechanic, but it's the one that they're playing on in the newest core set. So he's going to try and deal damage to me before second main phase and then cast creatures because they get bonuses from it. And I don't particularly enjoy it when his creatures get bonuses. Hmm. Decisions, decisions. Do I tap down the 4-2 or do I equip Sword of War and Peace? I think I tap down the 4-2. And this time I'm going to leave back the 2-1 to block, because it might have been incorrect to attack there. Pretty sure that was the wrong move to do. Just because if he attacks into me with Child of Night, then I can still kill it by blocking it. And he doesn't get damage in for Bloodthirst. Plus the life total stay relatively the same, whereas I did come out in the short end of that, so that was just bad math on my part. Okay, good. And he doesn't get Bloodthirst for that, because he doesn't bother attacking into me first. Uh, Ruthless Cull Blade. Alright. Better keep it a high life total. Otherwise, that guy could get out of hand. Oh, great. 
another problem of not drawing mana. Hmm. Let's see. I could go Car Outfitter, and I believe I will attach that Sword of War and Peace to my... Uh... No, let's put it on the Elite Vanguard. And then I can play Core Apprentice for one more mana to kind of clog up the board. That's basically how we're going to have to beat him here, is putting enough pressure on the board to keep up with what everything he throws out at us. Uh, swing with the 2-2 is not going to do anything, so let's just swing with the 4-3. Sadly, none of his dudes are red or white, otherwise I'd be unblockable. Yes! Double block! Aha! Die. That was awesome. I love it when they two-for-one themselves. Makes this game so much easier. Alright, Sorum, what you gonna do? Nothing. That's right. Alright, another bloodthirst guy he didn't get to trigger. Excellent. That means the game is going our way. Ooh, brave the elements. Sadly, he is at nowhere near enough a life total to actually make that a relevant combat trick. So, we need to have... Ah, uh, I need a freaking land. Okay, well, let's equip this to our Kite Sail Apprentice, because that'll also give him flying and plus one plus one. So, he can fly over everything... And I get to activate sort of War and Peace's triggers. So I will gain four life out of this exchange, and Soren will lose two life. Boom. Ah, uh, don't play cards, Soren. You know you want to take damage from Sword of War and Peace. Grr, urge to feed. That card can be a huge blowout in his deck. Definitely have to watch it out for that because that is combat trick of the century. Now I'm thinking. Perhaps we use this as a counterspell? Because that's basically what it is. Hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we have the combat in hand anyway. Let's do it. Brave the elements. Choosing black. Now my creatures have protection from black, and his spell has no legal target and is thus countered. Boom, shaka, laka, boom. And another... Wow, man, he's got a ton of bloodthirst dudes. I'm starting to sense a theme here. <laughs> Sadly, he has no cards in hand anymore, which means we can't trigger Sword of War and Peace to make him lose even more life. Uh, but at the very least, we can play Kite Sail and make our other dudes fly. Might as well do that. Because I have no land in play whatsoever, and Gideon's Avenger is completely irrelevant at this point. It's just a 2-2. Uh, yep, get in the air for four. I'll just gain a few life. Besides, the more cards I hold in my hand, the more life I'm going to end up gaining off of the Sword of War and Peace. So it just works out better that way. Definitely should have waited until after combat to play that Kite Sail, because I'm a donk. <laughs> Oops. I mean, I'm pretty sure that free life point isn't going to matter, but technically it's the right thing to do, so gotta notice your mistakes and kick yourself in the butt for it. Just a little bit, though, not too much. Because you don't want to get, like, all emo on yourself for doing something as minuscule and benign as that. Still, though, it's good to learn from your mistakes. Ah, uh, yeah, and still not land. So let's give a dude flying. Doesn't really matter. I'll pick the core hook master. Just because I like him better. And we get in there for seven. And at this point, Sarn Markov has one turn to live. He had better find an answer quick. You have, like, super removal spell of the century? Nope, that's a land. Awesome. He's gonna turn dude sideways in a pitiful attempt to try and uh, kill me, but I... Let's see... Some of his dudes have lifelink, don't they? Let's see. So he could gain... He's going to gain six life no matter what. Um, I might as well... See, he's going to be at nine life. 
Oh, I have a hook master in hand. I just swing for lethal next turn, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I'll tap down his 4-2 with the hook master and swing for exactly lethal. So, not to worry, children. We are actually okay. He has no cards in hand, so there's nothing he can play. And, yeah, this is pretty much game over. Alright, so let's go through the motions. Core Hookmaster, tap down your only blocker. Move to my attack step. Mash on the A button. How do you like me now, Soren? Yeah, you take that damage. I don't even get the trigger Sword of War and Peace because of state-based effects. Winner! I love seeing that. Never, ever gets old. You know what this means now? We only have two Planeswalkers left to beat in the entire campaign. We have to fight ourselves, which will be a bit peculiar, I will admit. And then we get to play against what is arguably the most broken, the most overpowered, insanely unfair Duels of the Planeswalkers decks ever. That would be Karn. However, he is in the future, albeit the not-so-distant future, so we don't have to worry about him quite yet. Next time we get to do the mirror match. Yeah! Anywho, guys, thanks for watching. It's always a pleasure making videos for you guys, and it's always a pleasure seeing your comments and ratings and whatnot on my videos. So, thanks for tuning in.